Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The transition from the Cretaceous to the Paleogene was far less of a tumultuous affair on Alter Earth. While minor extinctions occurred here and there, many animals that we would think of as being Mesozoic mainstays on our world lived on into the Cenozoic in this timeline. Some groups of organisms weathered this change very efficiently, maintaining a high diversity of forms into the new era. Sharks and aquatic Chelonians in particular managed to persist with their late Cretaceous numbers intact, being found in fossil bearing rocks all over the world. On the other hand, other marine animals were not so fortunate. Ammonites and Belemnites, once the premier lineages of ocean going mollusks, suffered during the Paleogene. Of the two, the Ammonites fared better remaining fairly common and diverse throughout the Paleocene and early Eocene. Three families were the most prominent representatives of the group. Pachydiscidae, Desmoceratidae, and Placenticeratidae, with a novel family evolving during the Paleocene, Griffodiscidae. Remains of these filter-feeding animals have been recovered from most continents, where they remained the primary food source for certain mosasaurs. Most were modestly sized, being comparable to bowling balls, while the late Paleocene, early Eocene genus Colossoceras was the size of a small car. After this point, they experienced a slow but marked decline as global temperatures began to drop. In a situation paralleling that of the nautiloids from our world, ammonites shrank in range and diversity after the Eocene, eventually leading to the single living genus Palau Helix. Several species are known from the tropical regions of the Pacific Ocean, particularly in the shallow seas surrounding the Philippines, Papua and Micronesia. Just as in our world, nautiloids also experienced a decline across the Cenozoic, joining their distant ammonite cousins in the tropical Pacific by the Holocene. Roughly seven to eight genera are known from fossils since the Paleocene, with only three of these surviving into modern times, including the familiar Nautilus and Allonautilus genera. Genetic analysis has revealed that these animals diverged from each other during the late Cretaceous. An additional genus, native only to Alter Earth, is the closely related Perionautilus, native to deeper waters surrounding the Solomon Islands. Another cephalopod lineage that was not so fortunate was Balemnitida. Once a spectacularly successful group in the Mesozoic, by the late Cretaceous they had declined quite substantially. Indeed, by the Maastrichtian, Belemnites were restricted to waters around the European archipelago. While on our Earth the KPG extinction event finished them off, on Alter Earth several genera lingered on into the Paleogene. Only one of a couple of late Cretaceous families survived into the Paleocene, Belemnitelidae. The other group, Dimitobelidae became extinct during the late Maastrichtian, leaving only two European genera of their sister group to swim on into the new era. The downfall of these cephalopods is still not well understood, but it is presumed to have been down to competition with squid and changing oceanic conditions. The last two genera, Hyninobelus and Belemnitella, are rare components of Europe's marine fauna with fossilised guards of these animals recovered from Belgium, France and the UK. Belemnitella europa appeared during the early Paleocene of France, where it hunted small fish and was itself preyed upon by halisaurine mosasaurs and sharks. Its extinction occurred around the time of the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, while its cousin Hyninobelus lasted until the end of the Eocene. In their place, octopi and especially squid would take over their niches. In a similar manner, the reef-building rudest bivalves persisted into the Paleogene with heavily reduced numbers, having gone through a periodic decline during the Maastrichtian. Although several genera remained in the warm shallow seas of the Tethys region, this would be the final flourish of these prolific animals. In certain areas off the coasts of Africa and Southeast Asia, Rudists have persisted into the Holocene, but their reef building days are long over. As in our world, it is the corals that have taken over this niche, albeit this transition occurred during the Oligocene on Alter Earth. Moving away from invertebrates, 
Paleogene shark faunas on both worlds are surprisingly similar. All of the familiar lineages that we would expect to find in Paleocene and Eocene deposits are either present or inferred to have existed on Alter Earth. In addition to this, certain lineages that died out at the end of the Cretaceous have survived into the Paleogene. The blunt-headed anacoracids are a commonplace fossil group along coastal North America and the Tethys, inhabiting the niches of generalised carnivores prone to scavenging. The genus Morocorax, mostly in the form of teeth, is a common find at Fayum and Eocene deposits in the Maghreb. Measuring roughly 3.5 metres long, it has been suggested to have resembled the bull sharks of our world, being an inhabitant of shallow seas with a blunt snout and comparatively small eyes. Although widespread and successful, anacoracids became extinct during the Miocene, likely as a result of increased competition from other shark groups and climatic changes. However, their close relatives and descendants, the Laniorhinids, are still around in the Holocene in the form of the genus Simocorax. Native to the tropics in a wide arc that includes Central America, Africa, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific, four different species are present. The genus is quite large at up to four meters long, possesses relatively small but razor-sharp serrated teeth, and lives a solitary opportunist scavenger slash hunter lifestyle. They are known as being proficient devourers of carrion, often being among the first large oceanic carnivores to turn up at a carcass. These tendencies have given them their common name, the butcher sharks. Other iconic Cretaceous shark groups in the order Lamniforms, such as Critox rhina, had already vanished before the end of the Cretaceous. The genus Duardius of the family Carbidodontidae persisted into the Paleogene, possessing a near-global distribution and ranged in size from 2 to 5 metres. A robust generalist with large teeth and a powerful bite, Duardius was one of the most common sharks of the late Cretaceous and Paleogene in Eurasia, the Tethys and Africa. Its diet would have included almost anything that it could swallow, including large fish, turtles, smaller marine reptiles and other sharks. Species of this genus favoured bulk over speed and, while being incredibly powerful predators, began to decline during the Oligocene and eventually perished by the late Miocene. It was likely outcompeted by the descendants of the prolific genus Creta Lamna within Otodontidae. The aforementioned genus was incredibly long lived, first appearing roughly 103 million years ago during the Albion, and only dying out during the late Oligocene. A modestly sized jack of all trades, Creta lamna species range from 2 to 3.5 metres long and were fast swimming open ocean hunters, generally playing second fiddle to other more powerful sharks during the Paleogene. After the faunal turnovers of the late Eocene, otodontids expanded greatly in size. By the late Oligocene, the genus Xiphostyrax had emerged, members of which are still around in the Holocene and superficially resemble the great white shark from our Earth. Measuring up to 7 metres long in the Miocene species Xiphostyrax woodwardia, the modern forms are slightly smaller at 5.5 metres. The genus inhabits a similar niche to the familiar Carcharodon, being ram feeders of medium-sized aquatic prey. Other otodontids were even larger, especially during the Miocene, after the extinction of the archaic serpentine mosasaurs during the late Eocene, which had been the dominant predators of the Paleogene oceans, a sudden power vacuum emerged. This void was filled by the Tiamatoid sauropterygians and various lamniform sharks, including the 8-metre otodontid Pseudotodus crassidens. Another giant, the 12-metre Cilodon horridus, was a specialised relative of Duardius, adapted to prey on large, filter-feeding marine reptiles. True lamnids never produced similar forms to the great white shark on Alter Earth, generally being more slender and fast-swimming animals in the genre Isurus, Lamna, and Carcharizodus. All other shark orders familiar to us had already emerged during the Cretaceous, and representatives of these can be found on Alter Earth during the Paleogene. Many, such as the Squaliforms, Squantiforms and the Saw Sharks, are remarkably similar to those from our world, 
in some cases represented by the same genre. Minor differences do occur, however. The carpet sharks never produce gigantic filter-feeding forms, instead remaining rather small, cryptic, and superficially catfish-like. The largest form ever produced by this lineage on Alter Earth was the late Miocene Gingula mustoma of Southeast Asia, measuring up to 4 metres long. The Requiem sharks are also generally familiar looking animals. Although unlike certain other shark orders, none of the modern genre have persisted since the Cretaceous. These mostly nocturnal, speedy predators have the largest eyes comparable to body size of any sharks, and are not picky eaters, often being observed to follow butcher sharks to a carcass. These are also rather modest in size, ranging from just 70 centimetres to over 3 metres at full adult size. Interestingly, true basking sharks never evolved on Alter Earth, with their niche being filled by members of Otodontaspidae that convergently resemble megamouth sharks. Unlike that deep sea oddity, these filter feeding animals are a commonplace and long lived group, evolving from the Cretaceous Jolonginidae. Although very rare in the fossil record, the late Eocene Sisu Chasma decari of Europe is the oldest known Cenozoic form. Several species within this genus still survive in the Holocene, inhabiting almost the entirety of the world's oceans. These animals can reach gargantuan proportions, with some individuals measuring up to 14 metres long. In addition to a wealth of selachimorphs, a few distinctively Cretaceous ray-finned fish lineages have persisted into the Cenozoic on Alter Earth. Notable among these are the Pachycormids, best known for containing the massive Jurassic Leedzichthys. On our Earth, these ancient fish became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, but with no mass extinction to finish them off, they survived into the Cenozoic on Alter Earth. Two distinctive subfamilies exist and could not be more different from each other, Rinconicthinae and Orthocorminae. The former occupy the gentle filter feeding niche that whale sharks and manta rays inhabit on our Earth, producing several genera over the course of the Cenozoic. Fossils of the genus Shimadichthys have been recovered from deposits ranging in age from the late Paleocene to the late Oligocene in North America, Eurasia and Africa. This animal measured up to 6 metres long and is thought to have given rise to the genus Hypocormus during the Oligocene, of which a single species, Hypocormus colossus, survives to the present. This enormous planktonivore rivals the whale shark in terms of sheer size, measuring up to 18 metres in rare cases. Although understandably none have ever been weighed, it is estimated that large individuals could possibly attain a mass of 50 tonnes. The modern species is restricted to the tropics, travelling vast distances in order to breed and locate food. During the warmer climes of the Paleogene, these fish possibly possessed a global range and higher species diversity than they do today. Their close cousins, the Orthocormines, pursue an incredibly different lifestyle. Emerging during the Middle Cretaceous, these streamlined, marlin-like fish are among the fastest animals in the ocean. Although dying out during the KPG mass extinction on our Earth, on Alter Earth they passed into the Paleogene and rapidly began to diversify around the time of the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. As true marlins, swordfish and relatives never evolved here, the orthocormines took over these niches. They show a strong trend towards ever more streamlined bodies, with members of this group gradually losing their teeth over the course of the Cenozoic. Two subgroups, the lance fishes and the false marlins, first appear in the fossil record during the late Paleocene and the Middle Eocene respectively. Both surviving to the present, these dashing piscivores are closely related to the Cretaceous genus Protosphirena, from which both may have evolved. Capable of reaching sustained speeds of up to 45 miles an hour, they are among the fastest of all ocean-dwelling animals. Their sister taxon, the genus Leptospherena is a more basal form that seemingly diverged during the early Cretaceous. Despite first appearing only in the late Eocene, phylogenetic studies have suggested a placement close to the extinct Orthocormus, indicating a lengthy ghost lineage. Limited to only a single genus and species, 
Leptospherena is a highly unusual predator, measuring up to 2 meters long, with an elongated body and slender narrow jaws. This fish is native to tropical seas surrounding Indonesia and northern Australia. Moving back to tetrapods, the Chelonians were present in Alter Earth's Paleogene oceans in high numbers. During this era, the Pleurodiers, also known as the side-necked turtles, had a notably widespread presence across the northern continents. During the Paleogene, the side-necked turtles were not limited to inland waterways, with many genre and even whole families being well adapted for life lived in salt water. Taphrosphionans and Bothriemidans produced a wide variety of generalists and specialists found all over the Old World. At least four genera were wholly marine in nature, but unlike the sea turtles of our world, were limited to near-shore shallow seas. Generalist forms such as Hexemis, a football-sized animal that dwelt in the eastern Tethys during the early Eocene, were rather typical. Feeding on underwater plants, small fish and detritus, Hexemis would have utilised its long neck and wide mouth to seize food items. Other forms were significantly larger and stranger in appearance, such as the two metre long Hecatochelis, a slow moving herbivore that grazed on the seabed in warm tropical seas. Alter Earth paleontologists have determined that the animal was a poor swimmer. Instead, rather like a Chelonian hippo, it would have walked along the seafloor searching for seaweed. If threatened by predators, Hecatochelis could have tucked its neck inward sideways while remaining anchored to the sea floor. Taphrosphionans were also diversified around this time, with some genera in Africa and Asia becoming specialised sand sifters, rooting about in the sand utilising their pig-like snouts. Others also became herbivores, particularly in and around southern Asia, frequenting the brackish waters of estuarine river mouths. Bothriemidans were rare in North America, becoming extinct there during the late Paleocene. Fresh water forms also existed in the waterways of Europe, but died out during the early Eocene after the arrival of new competitors from North America. Fox Emidinans remained successful in Europe, dwelling in both freshwater and shoreline ecosystems, but were heavily damaged by the Eocene Oligocene extinction event. Their diversity never recovered, and by the late Oligocene most of the remaining species had disappeared but in Italy, Greece and Spain they managed to hold on a little longer as cryptic forms. These animals only truly vanished by the mid to late Miocene. The Niger Emidinans, an endemic group native to Africa, were generally uncommon and possessed a poor fossil record. While archaic forms were rather small and generalistic, a single genus of bulky, snapping turtle-like predator, the genus Afrochelydra, remained in the Congo River Basin. Kermademidans were, and remain today, commonplace on the island of Madagascar, being the major group of freshwater turtles there. In overall form, they resemble the sliders of the Americas in our world. This group was also present in Paleogene India, but suffered heavy losses once that island subcontinent crashed into the Asian mainland. However, a single bizarre genus remained in the rivers of northern India and Bangladesh, Ramachelis, a slow-moving, baggy-skinned animal with a carapace the size of a dinner plate. This carnivorous turtle superficially resembles the Matamata of our world and inhabits a similar ecological niche. Descendants of the genus Inichelis thrived in Paleogene South America, inhabiting shoreline environments where they fed on fish small crustaceans, and the occasional mouthful of seaweed. This group was never able to enter freshwater environments due to strong competition from other turtles already present there. Even in modern times, Inichelids are a common sight along the tropical coasts of South America, the Caribbean, and the southern United States. While the Pleurodiers monopolised the rivers and shorelines, their Cryptodire cousins were more at home in the open ocean, Toxochelids were a lineage of marine turtles that seem to have been generalistic omnivores. Known mostly from North America during the Paleogene, only three genera are known and their fortunes dwindled. Outcompeted by other turtle groups early on, they died out by around the late Eocene in North America. The famous Protostegids, familiar to us due to Cretaceous genera such as Archelon, 
became extinct during the KPG extinction event on our world. However, these turtles survived into the Paleogene on Alter Earth, and would remain the largest group of marine Chelonians, closely resembling leatherbacks in their appearance. Some genera possess bony projections on the top of their shells, offering protection from large marine reptiles and sharks, while others developed bizarre elongated skulls adapted for suction feeding. During the Paleogene, these were incredibly successful animals, with their remains recovered from fossil sites all over the world. However, they were adversely affected by the Eocene or Ligocene extinction event, which wiped out most of their diversity in the Southern Hemisphere. They persisted further to the north, where they continued to be a major lineage into the Holocene. Their somewhat close relatives, the Dermochelids, are known from South America and possibly Australia by the Maastrichtian. During the Paleogene, they remain confined to the waters surrounding Australia, Zealandia and Antarctica. Some genera, such as Kimbaro Steger, appear to have been specialised hunters of hard-shelled bivalves and ammonites, while other forms were near-identical to the leatherback turtles of our world. Dermochelids are still found mostly in the Southern Hemisphere by the Holocene, being more diverse and specios than their familiar equivalents. Instead of the single living genus from our world, there are at least four on Alter Earth, becoming increasingly mesothermic as the Cenozoic progressed. This allowed them to travel into more Antarctic waters that were off limits to other turtles, and additionally travelling into deeper waters to hunt for cephalopods. Panchelonids, being all turtles more closely related to chelonids than to leatherbacks, are a widely successful lineage. These animals are much like modern sea turtles, eating a wide variety of objects, from jellyfish to seaweed to cephalopods. They thrive all over the Northern Hemisphere, and manage to outcompete the smaller protostegids by the Oligocene, with only large members of that group surviving into modern times. By the Paleocene, Panchelonids already possessed a global range, and still do in the Holocene, albeit not in the polar regions. The familiar family Chelonidae does not exist on Alter Earth, emerging in response to the KPG extinction event in our world. Instead, two subfamilies are present on Alter Earth, Allopleuroninae and Perestrianae. These fill the niches held by Chelonids on our world, being generalistic omnivores capable of eating a wide variety of plants and soft-bodied animals. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering Morag, the second most famous Scottish lake monster. See you again soon. Cheerio!